Okay, so we've finally come far enough that we can start doing some practice problems, and so I thought it would be good to do a sort of discussion slash problem section, since I am trying to, as much as possible, follow the format of a traditional university course here. And I wrote some simple little practice problems, and we're going to go over those, so let's switch over to the desk view here. Okay. So the screen is a little bit busy right now, but we have several things we're going to make use of here. We have the webcam, so you can see me, hello. And then we have our old friend GNU Octave off to the side here uh, so that we can do calculations when we want numerical answers. And then we have the actual document in front of me. So the first practice problem we're going to do is we're going to say, let's say some object falls from a height of 100 meters and in all these problems we're going to neglect air resistance because these are just simple kinematics problems. And we want to know if it falls from 100 meters, how long will it take until it hits the ground? And we're going to assume that gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, which is what it's generally going to be. It'll be, you know, like 0.01% less if you're at the top of, the mount of a mountain, and it'll be like 0.01% more if you're at the bottom of Marianas Trench, or it might be the other way around. <laughs> We'll get into that later. We're not going into why gravity is what it is at the moment. We're just accepting that it's 9.8 meters per second squared, although we don't always measure exactly that value, uh, but that's because uh, the real world has air resistance, but we're doing these practice problems where we're going to ignore that inconvenient little fact. So how do we solve this problem, right? How do we get from 100 meters to the ground with an accurate answer? And actually, let me slide a uh, extra piece of paper in here so that I don't uh, get Sharpie bleeding through from one layer to the next. Put my green sheet of blocker paper in the middle there. So we start out with 100 meters as the height. Alright, so that's our why not. And we start with our acceleration, which is going to be a constant, is equal to minus force the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 eight meters per second squared. And now we start to see some of the unfortunate side effects of me being left-handed, where even doing it this way, uh, you're gonna see blockages in what I write as I go. So I'll try to write from uh, from underneath so it's a little bit easier. Um, so, but we're gonna use our handy-dandy kinematics equation that says that y is equal to y naught plus v naught times time plus one half acceleration times the time squared, and we're gonna set that equal to zero, right? We're gonna say that, you know, if, if uh, you know, 100 meters off the ground is our starting position, then we're gonna say that zero meters off of the ground is, well, the ground, so, you know, uh, you know, y equals zero is the ground, and that's what we wanna know, is when is it gonna reach the ground? So this ought to be pretty straightforward, right? Um, v naught is zero, right? We're, we're just dropping it, we're not throwing it. So the initial velocity is just zero. So we'll neglect that term. And then this is 100 meters. And this is 9.8 divided by two times the time squared. So just the sum of those two terms is equal to zero. So or sorry, uh, that's, there should be a minus sign there, right? That should be minus, not plus, right? Because A is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So 100 meters minus 9.8 divided by 2 T squared is equal to 0. So 100 meters is equal to 4.9. We can just do that as mental math, although uh, just in case you don't believe me, we can ask Octave here. We can say 9.8 by 2, 4.9. So then, you know, that times t squared is equal to 0. And so then, again, just doing algebra, move this term over here. And then we get t squared is equal to 100 meters divided by 4.9 meters per second squared. So t is equal to the square root 100 
divided by 4.9. And so this is past the point where I really want to do mental math, so it's, you know, and it's not uh, going to be an even power, so now we'll consult our handy-dandy computer here. So we'll say, what is the square root of 100 divided by 4.9? And the answer is t is equal to 4.5 seconds. And so we'll discuss in a later lecture why this is not a very realistic scenario, actually, because if something is dropping 100 meters, it's going to reach speeds where air resistance will matter. But if we neglect air resistance, it takes uh, 4.5 seconds to drop 100 meters. So that's a quite a long, long time. It's, you know, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, and, uh, you know, from the, I guess that'd be a, you know, for me, a 300 foot drop. Uh, to the bottom from somewhere, it's a, it's quite a, quite a, quite a wise ways to wait if you fall from a hundred meter tower. Fortunately, there's not too many hundred meter towers, and uh, air resistance is not negligible. Though that actually makes it take longer. <laughs> All right, so now let's consider another scenario. Let's say that uh, you know we take some object. Do I have my tennis ball handy? No, I do not have the tennis ball of science handy. Um, you know, I just have this little. 3D printed doohickey here, you know, if I toss something up in the air, how long does it take to, right, because if, if you toss something up in the air, there's always a tiny little moment in time where it stops, and then it turns around. So we want to ask ourselves, if you throw something up at 15 meters per second, which is a, a good, uh, you know, a good uh, solid toss, that's a pretty good velocity, it's not, uh, you know, anything super crazy, but it's uh, definitely a good solid throw. And so if you throw something at that speed, or at that velocity, if you were, because we're going to specify 15 meters per second straight up, uh, how long until it turns around and starts moving down? And then we also want us to ask an associated question, um, how high does it get? And then, sorry, oh, right, skipping over my own intermediate, and then how long until it hits the ground again? So to answer that question, we're going to use another kinematics equation. We're going to use the fact that velocity in general is equal to whatever your initial velocity is plus acceleration times time and our acceleration is equal to minus 9.8 again because we're only considering acceleration due to gravity neglecting all other forces and our initial velocity is equal to plus 15 meters Per second. Okay, so, well, that should be pretty straightforward, right? We want to know when is the velocity zero, right? Because we want to ask, you know, when, if something's moving up, 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 and then slowing down, and it stops for just a moment, and then it turns around and comes back down, we want to say, what is that moment in time when the velocity is zero? So we say v is equal to zero is equal to minus 9.8 eight meters per second squared times time plus 15 meters per second. It's unfortunate that a plus sign and the T look kind of similar, but uh, you can always differentiate it with just uh, logic, <laughs> although uh, in good computer fonts they're more distinguishable. Okay, so you know, again, just doing some simple algebra. These have, you know, rearranging, rearranging since we have zero on the other side. So then we have, you know, 9.8 times meters per second squared. Let's keep including our unit times the time is equal to 15 meters per second. And so, you know, again, just simple algebra. T is equal to 15 divided by 9.8. Eh, it's, uh, it is in fact 1.5 seconds. All right. So this is why this is why mental math is can get you into trouble. Um, yeah, because one out right one, you know, 9.8 divided by 15 is 0 0.6 seconds. Right. So I can blame it on performance anxiety. Uh, but uh, we'll just do some editing later. Uh, yeah, so uh, remember, do your arithmetic, right? <laughs> All right, so that's 1.5 seconds. So then we want to ask the next question. Um, but for this, we're not going to need to do mental math, right? Because I said, you know, it goes up and it comes back down. 
and at that moment it stops and then it turns around and goes back down. Well, remember, the graphs of position versus time look like this, right? You know, so this is, you know, time, and this is you know, y, aka the height, right? And so we can use the fact that you'll notice that this 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 right half of this graph is just a mirror, the mirror image of the left half of this graph, right? And well, okay, so can we use that? Well, we sure can, right? If if this is just the same thing as this in reverse, right? You know, going up or you know coming down is just the process of going up, but in reverse. Again, to, for that to be true, we crucially need to neglect air resistance, but we're going to keep doing that. But as long as the only force is gravity, going down, going back down is just the same thing as going up, but in reverse. And so it takes the exact same amount of time. And so we can capitalize on that to say that, all right, well, the, you know, the, you know, you know, time to reach the ground, say, times of ground, is just going to be equal to two times the time it takes to reach the top, right? Which is going to be equal to, you know, roughly three seconds, or, you know, appro do, do the little approximately equal to sign, approximately equal to three seconds. And so, all right, how about our last question of then how high does it go? Well, to answer that question, let's go back and use our t equals 1.5 second answer, and then let's plug it back into the kinematics equation, right? Which says that y is equal to y naught, which is just zero, because we're starting on the ground. Or say we're doing some sort of like a, you know, a granny toss, right? So it's, you know, when say when you let it go, it's, it's you know, very close to the ground. We're going to approximate it as just starting it at, at, uh, at zero. Uh, and, you know, it exactly where it starts depends, I guess, on uh, how tall you are. Uh, and then to that, we're going to add whatever our initial velocity is, which is, remember, uh, we said it was 15 meters per second. So plus 15 meters per second times time minus, uh, you know, 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 2 times the time squared. Because remember, the general equation is y naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And so to solve for this, then we just, you know, plug in our value, right? We, we want to, you know, at know t equals 1.5 seconds, you know, what is y, right? Well, let's just, you know, plug it in, right? So, you know, 15 times 1.5 plus, or, you know, minus uh, 4.9 times 1.5 uh, squared. I don't trust myself to do that, so let's ask our handy-dandy computer. 15 times 1.5 minus 4.9 4 times 1.5 to the second power. And that is equal to 11 meters, which we only have two significant figures, so it's, and it rounds down, not up in this case. So the answer is uh, 11 meters. So if you throw something up at um, 30 miles an hour, it'll reach a height of 30 feet if you insist on using uh, statute units, which I sometimes do. Um, but, you know, if you give something a good solid toss of 15 meters per second, which is, you know, I'd say, you know, not a professional athlete level fast, but definitely, you know, giving it a, a good solid throw, um, then it'll reach a height of 11 meters, which is, a, you know, a, a pretty decent height uh, if you neglect air resistance, which if you're throwing something uh, reasonably dense is uh, not, not a terrible approximation. Okay, one more, one more practice problem. So finally, let's consider this problem where we're going to need to uh, switch to horizontal mode for this. So hold on a second while we rearrange the screen. Okay, so for this last problem, you're all going to have to do without my smiling face, although maybe you're happy you don't have to uh, look at my ugly mug no more. <laughs> but we're just going to have uh, Octave up on the screen for uh, arithmetic so that uh, I don't make mistakes. Uh, and then we're going to solve this problem where you or someone you know uh, throws a ball 
uh, 30 degrees above the horizontal, so 30 degree angle from straight level, uh, and throw it at 18 meters per second. And we want to know how far does it hit the ground, right? How far does it travel before it hits the ground? Uh, and associated, how long does that take? And this is one of those questions where it's actually trying to help you. Uh, although, oh, sorry, let's correct this diagram. 18 meters per second. Uh, let's make it so that, uh, you know, the numbers are a little bit different. I w don't want to repeat 15 again. So we're making, we're making it 18 meters per second. And, well, we want to know how long does it take and how far does it go. And the second of those is actually trying to help you with the first, right? It's one of those things where it looks like it's just giving you uh, extra sub-problems, but uh, really it's to uh, help you by solving for this information. Uh, although I'm just telling you now that uh, this is what we need first. Uh, so if I was writing this as like an exam problem, I would probably put this uh, before this one. But this is not an exam problem. This is a pra designed to be a practice problem that I'll walk you through. OK, so just like previously, we're going to use our kinematics equations, right? And we have, uh, you know, our only acceleration is the y-axis acceleration, right? And we have y is equal to y naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And once again, this is going to be equal minus 9.8 meters per second squared. This is going to be, you know, something we're going to have to figure out. Uh, and this is just going to be zero. We're saying you're throwing it from the ground, and we're going to say that you throw it, you know, say, I guess, like, underhand, basically. So uh, you can neglect the uh, height of you or your friend or whomever is throwing the ball. So then let's say that, uh, you know, you've got this uh, vector quantity of the initial velocity, and it's 30 degrees off the horizontal, right? So vector problems are just right triangle problems, right? And so we've got this magnitude hypotenuse of 18 meters per second, and we want to know what is this vertical component, right? What is the opposite side of this triangle, right? So remember, you know, sine is opposite over adjacent, so uh, 18 meters per second, hypotenuse, aka the adjacent side of the triangle, uh, times the sine of 30. And I've, of course, of course chosen 30 degrees because the sine of 30 uh, is exactly 1 half. So then, you know, it's just equal to, you know, 18 divided by 2, which is equal to 9 meters per second. Okay, so that's going to be 9 meters per second, or I guess should I should have written 9.0, keep our significant figures consistent. All right, so now we'll use our kinematics equation, and first thing we're going to do is solve for how long does it take to hit the ground, and so, you know, we're going to say, you know, zero, because ground is zero, is equal to, you know, why not, which is zero, so we'll neglect it, uh, time, you know, 9.0 meters per second t minus 4.9 times the time squared. And because this is 0 over here, right, we can, you know, divide by t, and reduce everything by 1 power of t, and then we have, you know, 9 meters per second minus 4.9 t is equal to 0, or t is equal to 9 per second divided by 4.9 per second squared, which we will once again just ask the computer for, although it's approximately, uh, it's not, it's just a little bit less than 2, that's like 1.8, right? Uh, but we'll just, we'll just ask, we'll just ask Octave to crunch those numbers for us. So not 9 divided by 4.9 is equal to, yeah is equal to 1.8, 1.8 seconds, two sig figs. OK, so it takes 1.8 seconds. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, this is actually the same as we would have gotten if we had instead uh, used the the, the uh, equations that we used in the previous 
problem, right? Uh, it, it is entirely equivalent to saying that, you know, uh, we know that the we want the velocity to go to zero when it reaches the top of the arc, and, and using, you know, v is equal to v naught, or I guess it's, you know, v naught sub y, we have to specify there's x and y components now, um, you know, plus acceleration times time, and, you know, so, you know, and then we want to set this uh, equal to zero, uh, you know, to see when it reaches the top is equal to you know, v naught y you know, minus uh, g times t, and then, you know, t top is equal to v divided by g, and v ground is equal to 2 times v divided by g. Because you'll notice this is, you know, you know v naught divided by uh, g over 2, which is 2 times uh, v naught over g. So they're completely equivalent approaches. There's often more than one way to solve a problem in physics, which is kind of nice. And uh, you get the same result either way, and it's easy to show that they're sort of mathematically equivalent. Okay, so that's our answer to what I technically wrote as the second part of the problem, but it's really better to solve it first. And so then we want to ask, all right, well, how far does it go? Well, in x, there is no acceleration, right? So x is just equal to x naught, which is also, we're going to say, zero. We're just going to define wherever, you're, wherever you happen to be standing is, you know, x equals zero, uh, plus, you know, vx naught. Uh, times time, and there is no acceleration, right? There's just the initial velocity, and that's it. It doesn't speed up, it doesn't slow down. In reality, of course, it would slow down because there's air, but we're just going to forget about that for now. Okay, um, so, well, if the initial velocity in y is, you know, 18 times sine of 30, well, then the initial velocity in x is just 18 times the cosine of 30. Uh, and that I know less off the top of my head. Uh, so, you know, it's the square root of three over two is cosine, right? But uh, we'll just we'll just ask Octave to crunch those numbers for us. Uh, 18 times the cosine of um, 30, and then we have to convert it to radians uh, because, well, most computer programs interpret angles and radians by default. And we get 15 point, or just 16 meters per second. 16, because again, two significant figures. Okay, so then, you know, and we just multiply that by the time, right? So then, you know, x final, the final horizontal distance is equal to 1.8 seconds times 16 meters per second. And then, so we'll say, uh, we'll just multiply our previous expression by 1.8, uh, because, you know, you just need to keep track of your sig figs, although you can uh, wait until the end to actually propagate them. Um, you know, and we get uh, equal to uh, 28 meters, which is uh, pretty far. Um, you know, throwing something at uh, 18 meters is uh, meters per second is a a very uh, very solid uh, swift throw. That's that's 36 miles an hour, um, or you know, so 36 miles an hour. So what is that in uh, kilometers? Then uh, it's one one meter per second is about two miles an hour, and it's about 3.5 kilometers an hour. Um, so you know, that's well. Here we'll just multiply by 3.5. Uh, so it would be yeah, 98 kilometers an hour. Oh, that can't that can't be right. Um, 98, is it, is it? Times 2. Oh yeah, it is, because it's 60 miles an hour, so it would be uh, 98 uh, kilometers an hour. Yeah, yeah. So that's a uh, pretty, oh, oh, sorry. Oh my goodness. I, I, I can't remember anything. Right, we, we need, we're doing our, for our initial 18, 18 times 3.5. 18 times 3.5 is, yes, 63 kilometers an hour. So that's that's a pretty fast throw. Uh, and this is a, a pretty long distance, right? 28 meters, that's a that's a, that's a good distance. That's not, I mean, that's not, not anything crazy, right? Uh, it's, uh, you know, that's 
thoroughly achievable, but that's definitely uh, throwing a pretty good distance. So anyways, those are some, some simple practice problems. Um, you know, I am not sure I could throw something 28 meters, actually. Uh, if there were no air resistance and I was uh, having a good day, I, I, maybe I, I could. Um, and it turns out this is not the optimum angle. The I mean, it's spoiler. The optimum angle for to throw something at is actually just 45 degrees. Um, but in the in air, it's actually closer to 30 degrees. Um, we'll maybe go over in the future why the best angle to throw something at is 45 degrees. So, anyways, um, hopefully that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have questions or if you want, uh, you know, if you want copies of these problems and the solutions. I'll post those. Um, yeah. Bye.